We'll uh, open the executive session and uh, we're going to take the bills out of order. Mainly, uh, we get rid of the easy ones first. House Bill 287. An act establishing a committee to study decriminalizing sex work. Any question for the chairman of that? Yes. Um, thank you, Mr. Chair. We had uh, three different meetings and discussed this at length. And we realized that there, uh, the bill as it came before us uh, didn't clearly. Uh, in establishing a committee didn't clearly articulate uh, the broad concerns that uh, were raised during the course of the public hearing. We uh, met as a subcommittee and we came up with a recommended uh, bill that I think is under the name, I believe that Representative Wallace has submitted amendment number 25 Two four uh, that probably someone could move. The laws are recommended. Uh, amendments two five two four H. <coughs> I will just say second. I'll second it. No Get a discussion amendment? I would change it to the bill, et cetera. Uh, I'd actually li like to ask our Representative Edwards to clarify that. We worked on this together, so. All right. <laughs> you don't have to, but you're not violating. I'm glad you were I mean, I think what, what we, um, what the bill did is take the original one. <coughs> First, I think the most glaring thing that jumped out was the, the name of the title. I think that sent, uh, I think people had a number of concerns about this. The presumption seemed to be that, uh, I mean, as is, is, is it originally came to us, um, it was to, de to study decriminalizing sex work. That's not what, uh, this, it's not the sense of the subcommittee of the public, that this is a, instead of a, a committee to study issues related to the change in prostitution laws in the state of New Hampshire. And, you know, and, that, and that takes a number of forms. I know that people are concerned that there seems to be, you know, under our current laws, uh, that make it a misdemeanor for uh, whether or not someone views a commercial sex uh, act um, as human trafficking, as uh, prostitution, as sex work, which are three of the different terminologies that came before us. Uh, one thing that we recognize is that it treats the person who yeah, sells sex, the person who purchases sex, and the, purchase, and the person who arranges for the sale of sex all the same under the law. And for many people, that seems to be a bit of a concern, but one of the things that we should examine. Uh, another thing that, that this bill does is it recognizes or it, it recognizes that there is an ongoing impact upon uh, the person uh, who is convicted of prostitution uh, that uh, needs to be examined both from the, the outset of the interaction with the criminal justice system we want to know what happens to that individual in the, in the prison system and the correction system and what kind of stigma is, is attached to that. That's one of the things that was included in this. We've tried to uh, have a group of stakeholders. Um, we narrowed down the, the composition of the, of the committee to three House members and, and two members of the Senate made it strictly the legislative committee. It kind of it, it clarified what the different duties of the study committee will be. And it also specifically um, you know, listed a number of stakeholders or interested parties that the study committee should take information from, uh, which should include Department of Health and Human Services, Safety, 
the Chief of Police, the Coalition Against Domestic and Sexual Violence, the Harm Reduction Coalition, uh, Amherst's National Child Family Services, Legal Assistance, Sex Workers Outreach Project, Civil Liberties Union, HIV AIDS Task Force, and Survivors of Sex Trafficking, um, so that those all can be, uh, if they're, they're, their experience and expertise can come before the study committee. Um, and if we give it until November 2018 to make a report to the Speaker of the House, President, Senate, and Clerk. Any comments on the amendment? <coughs> Chairman? <coughs> Does the amendment replace the whole bill? Yes. Yeah. Change the title and change the whole bill. Okay. Is that like it? No. It's oh. Um, no, I got it. Um, I see that there's been a lot of thought put into this and sex traffic and traffic is included. But I am I'm going to oppose this because of the issue of sex trafficking. Could I ask why? I'm mean, I'm curious. Yes, I I am concerned. I know it's study; it's not legalizing. But I am concerned about the issue of sex trafficking in this state and um, I guess that's it that's it the concern about sex trafficking how do you play it I have not seen concern I'm curious too I think to <laughs> prove this study although I think it it needs to be looked into but I'm not in support of the study committee because I think it, it, the people who are involved in sex trafficking may get, um, find some, I don't know, legitimacy to what they're doing. Um, I don't know how to explain it. It's, I think I know what you mean. Any other? Yeah, oh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Oh. I guess what I'm curious about is we seem to be having just study committees willy-nilly. There's, there's a commission or a study committee that already exists for sex trafficking, which will cover some of the same things. We seem to be having these just to make people feel good. And I just really don't think we ought to waste our time on, on this bit. Like yeah, I, I agree. I just want to know the question why this was not put into the sex committee. I mean, sex trafficking committee. Commission at CMF. They have a commission set up for sex trafficking. And I was just curious to know why this wasn't sent to them <coughs> to study. <laughs> it's all right. Representative Cushing, please. I just like to say, you know, we recognize that there is a, 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 a commission that operates independently of the legislative study committee. It's not a commission that's kind of got a narrow focus for us to uh, examine it as legislators and to come up with a set for or not come up with a set of recommendations, recommended changes in that law. The representative has been uh, you know, concerned. I know that um, you know for some it may appear that study committees are you know not, are not very useful. I will just say that someone I have found in the past study committees to be useful when you particularly when you're wrestling with somewhat of a thorny issue or you're wrestling with an issue where people recognize that the current situation is not perfect or uh, that there are some concerns that are raised. The particular piece of legislation that you uh, entertain does not really address that, but you realize that, there should, that it does require, it should suggest that there be some more time to drill down deeper into an issue and come up with a recommendation. And I, I know that I've seen it work pretty well. I will go back to the experience of um, the police one body cameras where it, it took us three years to come up with a policy that we think actually worked. It required a lot of activity, but in the end, they think we came up with a product that the state of the country should be proud of. I'm not suggesting that that would be the same thing with this. But I hold up the possibility that the complicated issues that are raised by this can be a thoughtful manner. And 
as to Representative Saperato's question is precisely because of a, a credibility or a, a conflict in what the terminology is uh, that I, I alluded to. Is it human trafficking? Is it prostitution? Is it sex work? That right there kind of symbolizes uh, some of the contradictions that have to be uh, reinforced in And that hopefully by, um, I mean, just the language itself, I think, <coughs> Set up bells or something. And we're trying to avoid that. We're trying to like to deal with complicated policy issues by having language that is not neutral, but it's, it, it can be inclusive. Yeah, thank you. Um, thank you, Mr. Chairman. <coughs> this is addressed <coughs> to Representative Cushing. In other words, there's other things that are involved in, in human trafficking, such as for maids and things like that, that it don't involve sex. Is that why they did not want it to go there? I, I, it wasn't quite what they wanted to go there. We just started as two separate groups. The, the Human Trafficking Commission is pretty, you know, it's pretty well, it does good work. I don't know, you know, I'm not sure it's, it's going to do good work. I don't necessarily see it that we have to be in common. Yeah, again, I want to thank the, I want to thank the chair for uh, signing me for this. We answered a lot. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and to the representative to the far right of me here, uh, I would agree with what you said, that it is two different areas. Further discussion on the amendment? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I, I was on the subcommittee, and um, my concerns were with the whole uh, bill when the committee was on the health of individuals, um, how each individual party is uh, you know, prosecuted, um, what happens after that, uh, and people that are victims, you know, what, what, what happens, and, and right now it, it, it's really muddled, like it, it, it's hard to get out, I mean, I just, I just I read a lot, read a lot, and I just think we need something to protect, you know, individuals and help, but, you know, so it's just, made, I think we need more study. Um, you know, a lot of people that are in that profession prefer it, they choose it, but there's a lot of people that don't. And I just think that it's something that needs to be addressed more. I have a question, maybe some of the studies can address it. Um, my key interest is addressing the human trafficking of children. And do you see it in your community as a part of the study of <coughs> uh, adding to a successful uh, effort to um, stop that. I would hope it's not that's within the scope of what the How would you get an information Thank you, Mr. Chairman. 
I was totally against the bill itself. I didn't like the way it was written. But this new bill kind of sets up the criteria that they're going to study and whatnot. And I, after thinking about it and after what Representative Cushion did, they are two different things. You have trafficking of children and you have trafficking of people. And there may never be any sex involved. There are maids and whatnot. So I think I'm going to have to vote for this the way this is written this time out. Let me ask my question in a different way. I recall the testimony from some of the, uh, one or two of the sex workers who saying they would be willingly uh, tell the police about children being trafficking that they would know about and locations. Um, and their, their fear is of prosecution because it's a misdemeanor now, right? And so would this committee, study committee, be addressing that? I think they can address pretty much down there they want. <laughs> that's my curiosity, that's my curiosity. <clears throat> Thank you. Any further discussion on the amendments? I'm wondering if uh, there will be any collaboration or interaction with the commission. Yeah, that would be up to the commission, whether or not they would want to uh, interact with us. <coughs> My suspicion is that probably have their agenda on the particular. So, we have uh, we'll some laws put forward the uh, amendment. Who will check it? You know who I am. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I guess our first vote will be on the amendment. If you are in favor of amending House Bill 287 to the amendment 25248, you indicate so by saying aye if you oppose to that, nay, but for the law. Vice Chairman. Uh, Representative Frank Separato. Yes. Representative Dennis Steele. No. Representative Robert Fesch. No. Representative Larry Gagney. No. Representative John Burke. Yes. Representative Dennis Green. No. Representative Carolyn Farkas. No. Representative Joni McNally. Yes. Representative Dave Kasterman. No. Representative Scott Wallace. Yes. Representative Shannon Shanley. Yes. Representative Laura Kanawaka. Yes. Representative Roger Berube. Yes. Representative Robert Rainey Cushing. Representative Beth Ross. Yes. Kurt, yes. Representative Kate Murray. Yes. Representative Richard O'Leary. Yes. Representative Lynn Opterbeck. Yes. Chairman. Chairman. <laughs> Chairman. <laughs> How soon you? <laughs> so close, you know. Representative. Uh, Chairman uh, David Welsh. Uh, I'm going to vote now. Yeah, I'm going to vote. I got it. Oh, yes, it does. 13? 13 to what? All right. So. We have a motion for Representative Cushing. We have a lot to pass for the member. Is that just Representative Cushing make that one? I think that will take that. Second. Yeah. <coughs> and who seconds it? Laura. Right now. Yes. Representative Burke. Are you sure that Representative Burke didn't want to make the motion? <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> no, we're not. <laughs> right, well, we have the motion, and we have the language of the bill as amended. If you are in favor of passage of Household 287 as amended, you indicate so by saying aye, if you are opposed to that nay, so the follow all. Representative Frank Separato. Yes. Representative Dennis Field. No. Representative Robert Tesh. No. Representative Larry Gagney. No. Representative John Burke. Yes. Representative Dennis Greeny. No. Representative Karen Garcia. No. Representative Jody McNally. Yes. Representative Dave Kesterman. No. Representative Scott Wallace. Yes. Representative Shannon Shanley. Yes. Representative Laura Panalakis. Yes. Representative Roger Berube. Yes. Representative uh, Robert Cushing. Yes. Representative Beth Broad. Yes. Clerk, yes. Representative Kate Murray. Yes. Representative Richard O'Leary. Yes. Representative Lynn Upterbeck. Yes. Chairman David Welch. Yeah. Which brings us to the elephant in the room. House Bill 656FN-A-Local. An act relative to the legalization and regulation of marijuana. <laughs> Mr. Chairman? Yes, ma'am. I make the motion in expedient to legislate. I'd like to report on the bill, please. Second. Subcommittee should report. Motion to make. Oh, Bill, discussion. I apologize. Mr. Chair, Mr. Chair, we had a uh, vote. Uh, three to two ought to pass the subcommittee on House Bill 656. Uh, all of you should have an amendment. We'd like to introduce an amendment. Uh, 2478, which is uh, to 656. And they passed copies out that way, and they also passed copies yeah, this they way. Yeah, did. Make sure we had them. Uh, we could take the amendment up first, like the last bill. This bill permits adult uh, to possess and use up to three quarters of an ounce of marijuana or five grams of hashish and certain marijuana infused products. Can somebody second this? No, it's second it's the the didn't accept it. No, we're just talking about the just talking about the now. I'm sorry, yeah. but yeah. I don't Permit. have an amendment. I passed that copy. It's just coming around. You can actually. You should have. I passed a whole bunch that way. Enough for everybody. Attention, gentlemen. And it permits adults to cultivate. The difference in this one, this allows adults to cultivate up to six marijuana plants at home in a secure location that is not visible from other properties. And it possess and process the marijuana produced from the plants at the same location. It permits adults to give marijuana to other adults, provided not more than two quarters of an ounce of marijuana, five grams of hashish, or 300 milligrams of marijuana infused products. Or three immature plants provides the smoking and vaporizing marijuana in public by an adult is punishable by a hundred dollar fine. Provides that violations of the restrictions in cultivation would be a violation punishable by a fine of up to seven hundred fifty dollars. Penalizes dangerous volatile extraction and permits adults to possess, make, and sell marijuana accessories to other adults. Now this was put into if you read the paper recently. Some of the towns have taken on themselves to override the legislature by making their own ordinances, regardless of what we do. A uh, good example of that is in Dublin, where they're now going to stop the, uh, the use of products that can be used for tobacco products or other ones too, if they can be used for marijuana really. So they seem to be trying to thwart the will of the legislature, so we put this in as a home grow option on 656. Are there any questions on this? Do you have a question? No, I'm fine. I'm sorry, you have thumbs sticking up. Uh, I was, I was, actually, I was reading. Yeah, we were trying to Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Does this replace the bill? Does this replace the whole bill, or yes, it does. It does. Okay. Well, well, that's true. 
Oh, no, no. Let's have a, a, a motion so that we yeah. can discuss it properly. I'll make a motion about to pass. Yeah, I I Uh, in the way that you were describing the plants that the amount they're going to be fined for them and whatnot it seems as though that we would have to send every police officer in the state to a marijuana school so they would know what they were doing in order to arrest them thank you for that question because that's actually what we need right now because as I've done the ride logs with them and asked the state police what they have, they don't know what three quarters of an ounce is. What they're given is they're given a copy, a piece of paper with a picture of what three quarters of an ounce looks like, which is, they all believe it's just to be absurd, which it is. And this is in here. But however, this now keeps that, doesn't make any changes to that. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Again, there, there's a study committee out there to look into the legalization of marijuana. Yeah. We're essentially trying to shortchange this. This is another case of, of you know, of trying to do the same that somebody else is doing. It just seems to me to be, you know, superfluous. I, I can't see why we're trying to pass this now. Uh, and, it, and I'll be frank, they wouldn't, if we hadn't passed the last one, they wouldn't have this problem out in the field right now. Question there. Do you, do you know how many study committees there have been on marijuana legalization? I have no idea. No this idea. This is still a long line. Yeah. But still, yeah. E either you, either we follow them or we don't. So anyway. Should we follow the ones we already had? I have no idea what they were, what their conclusions were. Then why would we do this? One? I, I just don't see a purpose in this in this law. Oh. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I've had many uh, phone calls on this particular issue from my constituents and some are not. And uh, they feel we would be sending the wrong message if we were to pass uh, this legislation. So I'm not in favor of this piece of legislation the way it is written. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Fields. Yeah, yeah, thank, you, Mr. thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I got quite a few calls, and it's unusual because usually I don't get a lot of calls. But I got a flood of them this time in on my computer. And I'm going to vote no for this. The fact that we just had the marijuana one of all back that we did for college students to take care <coughs> of that problem so that they wouldn't lose their, their uh, scholarship funds. And I think we just keep going and going with stuff that we're making it worse instead of just let it work its way through right now. So if I'm not saying this bill has a lot of little flaws in it. And I don't really care what District of Columbia or Maine and Massachusetts do. That's their problem. I think this is New Hampshire and we should stick to what we're doing. So that's my opinion. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, my concern is the message we are sending to young people and the young people are the ones who are most susceptible to the uh, brain development and impeded brain development. And um, we've already told kids, marijuana is good for you. We've got our uh, medical marijuana bill and also the one about reducing the um, penalty. And I actually did support both of those, but my real concern is kids are saying, oh, marijuana is good for you, it's okay. And in fact, uh, my high school kids who were here last week, 
one of them said, I mentioned our bills on marijuana, and one of them said, you know, penalties are, wor are working, and they're, um, it's good to have penalties because that's a real deterrent. But um, I know there's the argument about marijuana is not as bad as alcohol, and it may not be, but um, I don't want another legal drug because alcohol is the number one drug of abuse. And we're in a position here in this state with our um, opioid crisis. And I think to do anything more to promote the use of marijuana is not going in the right direction. Well, I, I, I'm not sure if I represent Gardens people with us to the Merrimack facility where we noticed that marijuana had replaced opioids in a number of, about 20 or so, I believe, ex-military, who were dead set against marijuana use, yet they were all off of all of their opioids, and they stood for two hours, some of their physicians, to tell us why marijuana was better for them than the opioids, and how it got them off of opioids and probably saved their lives. So that was overwhelming. But, but, my, but my overwhelming point here is that if we really want to send a message, if you're really that concerned with young people, then take those damn uh, liquor stores off the highway. If that's what you want, then put a bill in to do that. Other than that, this is the way New Hampshire makes their money. Booze, butts, and bets. And butts probably is, is inevitable. Uh, we got an opioid <coughs> problem in the state, and I think we uh, shouldn't be pushing this to uh, extend the problem any more than what it is. And in the federal law, that if you get caught with, with marijuana, I don't care what size it is, you're going to go to jail. And also, if you do get caught, uh, this bill here is going to take away your Second Amendment. That's true. We have a letter uh, on file from the uh, Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms stating just that, that if you ha are involved in marijuana or any other drugs, you cannot buy a firearm. <coughs> so I guess if that, this were to pass, people would be required to make a choice. Yeah. You want to be armed so you can defend yourself and your family, or would you prefer to give it up? The question is, why isn't that occurring in the other states? Then? It does. It, it's a federal law. But it has it happened. What, whose guns have been taken away? They're not taking them away. They can't. You can't right. Them away. <laughs> and how? And who? And who has that ever had? In the 13 states that passed it, how does that happen? It doesn't enforce it. Okay. Nobody enforces the federal law. That's my point. We're the ones that enforce it. It's our state police. And if that were the case, then the law we just passed, they'd be arresting for under three quarters of an ounce. Yeah. Can you name a time when that's happened? Since we passed No, the but I could find out for you. I can tell you. Zero. I already checked. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, <coughs> Stratford County has done a lot of work in this area concerning drug courts and etc. And it's really not the message that we need to be sending to our young people within the state of New Hampshire. There's a lot of experts that are working that field in the drug court system, and they're not in favor of this. So, you know, I think they're a little more knowledgeable than some of us, and they've been doing it for quite a few years. And what we have done is improved quite a bit in the area. Now, other counties are looking at what we have done at Stratford County. So you don't go out there and start selling drugs and saying it's a good thing, and it's not gonna harm anybody. I disagree with that totally. You start with one, drug then it's not good enough you go to another drug and that's been said many a times by some people are really experts in the field thank you very much um thank you mr chair i um i i wasn't going to comment on this bill but i think that uh i wanted to offer just a uh, a, a different perspective. Um, I am really impressed by the work that was done by the subcommittee and I am persuaded by many of their arguments um, in terms of whether or not theoretically or philosophically marijuana should be legalized and I think that they make very compelling arguments. Um, on the other hand I am dealing not in theory or philosophy necessarily but practically 
and I, um, I'm opposed to the amendment and the bill. I will vote against them because I think that we have good reason not to, but those reasons haven't been expressed by others and I felt like I needed to uh, at least say there, there are other reasons for voting against this bill. I, I probably disagree pretty strongly with the idea that um, it's all about messaging because a lot of our bills probably send, if, you know, we, we don't always consider what is our, the message we're sending. I, I think that in this case, to Representative Saporetto's point, I couldn't agree with him more that we, we should be looking at what commissions and committees recommend and we should act, not necessarily in concert with the recommendation, but we should act uh, in response to the recommendation. That may be to reject it, but we do need to be considering that. We know that there is a commission at work right now, and that commission, I believe, is uh, looking at this issue very, very um, seriously, and they're d digging deep and diving deep into understanding what legalized marijuana would mean for this state, and I appreciate the work the commission intends to do. I do look forward to their recommendations. And I also think that if we look at our country right now, there are a number of experiments going on, and I think that's good news for us. I think the states that have legalized or are in the process of legalizing are um, important examples for us to look to, to see what they do well and what they don't do well. I think that it would be um, probably uh, premature at this point for our state to vote to legalize marijuana. But having said that, I am not entirely against that uh, possibility in the future, but I don't support these still. Thank you. Mr. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Put it all both pro and con here. The bottom line is education. I was drinking when I was 10 years old. I lived on the main streets of Manchester in the zoo area. Everybody knows where that is. I was smoking when I was 12 years old. I went out to, for track at Central High School. I crushed the bus and I threw them away. And I stopped drinking alcohol like it was going out of style. Why? Education. People were telling me that it was not good for you. If we want to ban marijuana, then we need to ban cigarette smoking, vaping, all alcohol shut, like, like Representative Separator said, shut down all the liquor stores, which mm. makes about 140 million bucks a year, I think, something like that in sales. If we're going to set the example, then the adults have to set the example. If you don't want your children to drink, don't drink. If you don't want your children to smoke, don't smoke. Now, this bill, I'm not going to smoke when I want. I like wine. I have wine. <laughs> I do not smoke. I haven't smoked in like 40 years, something like that. I'm going to vote for this bill because it's a choice of an individual to decide to do it. Hmm. Now, I know my daughter is going to tell my grandchildren that they're not going to do it. And if it's if the, if the education comes from the household in the proper way, then the kids won't do it. So, again, I'm going to vote for this bill because it's another choice that people can make. You're either going to smoke or you don't smoke. You either drink or don't drink. You swear or you don't swear, right? This will give those who would rather <coughs> smoke marijuana than drink alcohol would be the choice to do it. But I would insist that it be strictly enforced. You catch them, catch them doing something wrong with this, just like we do with um, with alcohol, so they nail it. That's it. That's it. Thank you for getting off my soapbox. All right. Adam, how are yeah, we talk about, in the bill here, it says that Maine and Massachusetts have both passed it. Maine did it on a rep referendum, and I believe Massachusetts did too. But how come it's not out there yet? They aren't allowed to smoke it yet. There's no, they haven't been able, to, no, they have not been. It's legal in Massachusetts. All right, Maine it is, and I'm sorry. Maine it is. Well, and also in Canada as well too. Okay. I think if you read the paper, you'll find that there's no rules and regulations on it yet, and they are not legal. 
There are. I did check with law enforcement. You can check out the list. Okay. I think so. I have to check to make sure. Yeah, thank you. Um, I, I've got a. I'm under no illusions on how this vote's going to turn out. I'm going to be supporting the Saporetto Amendment um, because I think that what we've come to realize is over the past, you know, four decades that the war on marijuana has been a failure, and that rather than dealing with the use of cannabis as a criminal justice matter, we should deal with it as a public health matter. Um, the world is changing. Come July 1st of next year. We're going to be the a state that is surrounded by Maine, Massachusetts, Vermont, and Quebec as a place where the really adult use of marijuana is permitted. Um, whether we like it or not, that's going to be the reality. I find that, um, to me, what, uh, in my experience in talking to people who have had <coughs> substance misuse problems or substance abuse problems, is that the gateway for many of them is not marijuana. The gateway to kind of that has been interaction with the criminal justice system itself. Because what we're doing when we make it a crime for people to use this naturally grown substance um, is that we bring them in contact with the criminal justice system and that in and of itself, you know, is not, you know, has long-term lasting impacts. I grew up in a, in a place, in a town where, you know, we had prohibition in the town of Hampton when I was growing up. It was a dry town. It was against the law for people to use alcohol. Um, you know, you wouldn't know that today when you go to Hampton Beach, for better or worse. Uh, we, uh, you know, we permit um, the adults to use mind-altering substances, for lack of a better word. That's what alcohol is. And um, we try to do it in a way that it, that it is the most measured, responsible use. I would rather see the resources that are being spent on, you know, apprehension and, and prosecution and, and incarceration of people who use marijuana or, people, you know, people who use substance, uh, mind -well in devoted toward education. We've done a remarkable job in this country in the past generation in driving down the use of nicotine, the use of tobacco. It's a, a success story that, you know, we, 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 we should be proud of, and that's where I think the emphasis should be and, and the resources should be devoted to. So, and while I respect people here and people who feel differently, um, I just think that it's time to move on from the, the war against marijuana and devote our attention to the more important things. Uh, well, thank you, Mr. Chair. Go ahead, I can wait. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I would like to know, Mr. Chair, if an agent, federal agent, arrests somebody, is the state of New Hampshire willing to defend that individual? Right. Or can they? No. So we're sending a message against our government? We're oh, saying, boy. hey, oh no, it's all right, but no, it's all right. What kind of message, we say it's not a message, what kind of message are you sending to our young people saying, oh, it's all right, but yet the federal government says, no, let's say that we have somebody in office now that wants to enforce that law. It's are we going to defend these people? If a federal agent were to arrest somebody for marijuana charge, the feds will handle it. Well, I think it's kind of but, if, but if we find a youngster of a legal age with that three quarter ounce of marijuana for personal use, we don't have to arrest him. I've seen this happen. Well, I, you know, I mean, you know, if I'm driving under DWI or I'm drinking, uh, you know, I get arrested. But you're breaking a the law. They're all laws. It doesn't matter if it's federal government or state. They're laws, and we're a country that is meant by laws. So this idea, I, I'm way confused with all of this. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And I got to stress, uh, you know, I hear children a lot yeah. in here, yeah. and everything I'm reading here says 21 years of age. <coughs> now on page three of the amendments, I did like how they inserted 18, 19, and 20. 
and it says no person shall smoke marijuana in public places. Now I would go to the Verizon and post this, that it is against the law if this passes because they're doing it now. Uh, they're doing it in a lot of other places that you know are in public. Um, now I do have a question for the vice chair, if I may, Mr. Chairman. Yeah. It says in section also page three, section three and four, or line three and four, manufacturer possession and purchasing of marijuana accessories, et cetera, et cetera, is a person who is 21 years of age. Mm -hmm. Now, sadly. There was a Massachusetts policeman in Manchester, uh, you know, he's a Manchester policeman, but he came from Massachusetts. In the Alicia Neely case, you know, where he was, uh, she was arrested because there was a child in the car with her unloaded side eye. So my question is, if somebody is 25 years old and they have one plant, but there's a child in the house, can this happen to this situation? Is there any safeguards that I'm not seeing? So they could say, oh, well, endangering a child or the child is under 21, so you're gonna be arrested, you know, for some, you know, having marijuana near the child. No, that's a good question to do bring up Representative Burke. Uh, that would be something that would have to be clarified should this be passed or, or passed. In other words, once you determine that, because as it is now, you've been subject to arrest anyway. As you know, any law enforcement can arrest someone for anything in the law that doesn't exist, they can arrest them for it, but they can be quit, and it does happen. Um, so I, there's nothing that prohibits that, or alcohol, or any other one that it in the same manner that does that. However, I, do, I would say that if the person is driving under the influence of alcohol or pot, there'd be a difference in how they drive if they're under one of the Yes, yeah, but I was just thinking, you know, a girl at home or, you know, in that situation. If you yeah. I, I would almost guarantee that the DCYF would be involved in that and they would either remove the children from the home or they would pursue the well, 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 hold on, though. They'd have to remove alcohol from the home, too, I think. If there's alcohol in your house and you have minor kids living here, you'd also have the kids removed as well by the same token, wouldn't you? Under the state law. Look, we don't arrest them. How many people in here have alcohol in their homes? How many of you have kids coming to your homes? Could you all be under arrest? I'm not willing to take that chance. And all the charges were dropped with uh, with Ms. Did you get a job? An arrest and an acquittal, but it's still a record. Mr. We've this to that one. Oh, no, we can go for <laughs> right. an hour. Let's go. Thank you, Mr. Chair. <coughs> if this passes, you won't be arrested by a New Hampshire policeman. Correct. But if a federal agent is here, you will be arrested. Under, Answer that. Under our current law, too. My, here's my, my basic feeling on the states that have already legalized. It's against the federal law, and if enough states legalize marijuana, yeah. the federal government will back off. Absolutely. In fact, they're already backing off. That's my, my whole theory. Now, I'm going to vote no on this, just so you know. I am too. I am too. I'm voting last. Mr. Chairman, can I make a, a, just a brief observation, please? Yes. Uh, we have an opioid crisis in the state. Everybody knows it. One of the reasons is the same distribution channels are used for marijuana because it's illegal, and then on to opioids and so on. You legalize marijuana, you take away the bad guys making the money, the bad guys giving the opioid as follow up. It's very important in, in, the, in the effort to eliminate opioids in this state to legalize marijuana. Thank you. Well, using that logic, then why don't we legalize opioids? <laughs> <laughs> There's a huge difference between opioids and chem chemicals. I know that, but, but the theory is that it's, uh, it's pretty much the same. No, they're not. They're short. They replace 20 of those people. Mm -hmm. yeah. They're opioids. Yeah. I, I had one call. <laughs> from somebody who says that if we were to not legalize, then every, all the, the people who want it will go to the other states and they take their money with them. And I thought that may be true, but I don't think that's a good reason to do it. I'd rather be the, the shining city on a hill in the, in the midst of all this chaos. Well, you remember when this committee entered in 1964 and to take up gambling? 
we're the first state to pass a lottery. Yeah. And all the argument was the same. It was identical, the same thing. The started. Now, we're in the reverse, where every state's going to have it legalized. We're going to be our own little island in New England, for the one state that punches people. But I know why law enforcement fights on this, is because of the penalty assessments. Yeah. It's not about the fines when you catch people. When it comes to law enforcement, it's a business. It's about making money. And those penalty assessments, which were supposed to originally be used to pay for the training for police and fire, are now everybody's hands are in this pile, and now it's become a free-for-all for them, and they don't want to lose that money where these penalty assessments are now multiple in the fines. And that's a problem I have with law enforcement, which we missed. I don't always want to, I'm not going to repeat a lot of the, the you know, the uh, arguments they already had here, but the one thing that I have not heard is the impact it has on the user. And there seems to be substantial um, information that, you know, your child's brain does not develop fully until well into the 20s. That's right. And that can be true for any number of things. You don't need to add one other thing to the next. And I think you're really naive if you think someone under 21 isn't going to find a way. They're going to be in the house. These kids are smart. They're, they're, you're providing them access. And to my way of thinking, I'm trying really hard to be open to this, but to my way of thinking, the evidence of the impairment that it can do to a developing brain overwhelms my wanting to be open to this. And as I said, you know, they're going to find it. You can lock it up all you want. Your kids are going to unlock it. Like, right I, can't, I, don't know, I can't support um, this just because of the impact it has on the, the child, frankly. All right, Reverend Pamela, I got the ball by Reverend Yes, I hate to think that we're going to pass this bill just because the state of New Hampshire is going to get rich. We have to stop and think of the people that it does affect, like Kate said. And it does affect people. So we need to give this a good thought because the opiate crisis out there, and I think people out there would think we were completely nuts if we legalized marijuana right now. Okay. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. This is an issue that's uh, near and dear to me because of my past experiences. Uh, first of all, the fact that this or any penalty assessment is a money-making fee for the police department. I have never experienced that in my entire life where somebody's going to go out and arrest somebody attached to a penalty assessment so we can get more money. <coughs> it just doesn't work that way that I've ever seen. And second of all, I'm conflicted sometimes between the problems with alcohol and marijuana. Uh, I've been involved in this for years and years, and the bit, and lately with the calls and stuff from the people I've been speaking to since I came on board, I've asked so many people what their positions are, <coughs> and it surprised me that the vast majority are for legalization of marijuana because more than anything, it puts a mellow effect on the user. Now there was one uh, witness that spoke about uh, challenging policemen and what did they find out? What was their biggest cause for uh, fights and brawls and something like that that we were involved with? Well the fights and brawls that I've been involved with over the years are all alcohol related. Amen. They, People I've dealt with with marijuana, first of all, after you wake them up from their sober and figure out what's going on here, they're willing to put their hands behind their back and be, uh, be handcuffed. Never had a problem with a, uh, a person on marijuana who's even extended it for a period of time. Now, when I was putting up the election signs to come to this honorable institution, I, I met an acquaintance of mine, he's probably about 40 years old now. When I first started, he was about 20. And we always had disagreements. He disagreed with my thoughts and I disagreed with his. And occasionally, you know, push came to shove, but that's neither here nor there. 
I just saw him about a year ago, and he remembered me, and then we finally talked about old times, and Wilson and Spruce Street in Manchester, and uh, Somerville Street in Manchester. These were the gang of kids that we'd always used to chase around everywhere. And lo and behold, it turns out, he's 40 years old now, he has a couple of kids. He says, you know, it's taken me 10 years to get off of alcohol. It's taken me seven years to get off marijuana. I've had problems over the years with alcohol, and it's always led to my arrest. My problems with the drug, it's never occurred or never had an incident where I got arrested for possession of marijuana. I was always mellow, and everything worked out just fine. He said, if I had my way, I would outlaw alcohol and legalize marijuana. But we can't do that. Um, a little more, a sadder uh, incident. When I was first up in detectives uh, as an investigator, we had a homicide in Manchester, the Kimball Street housing projects. The 18 or 20 year old kid was selling drugs to an 18 or 20 year old kid in a, and I'll never forget it, a white Chevy pickup. To make a long story short, they were fighting over a nickel bag of marijuana with the lad from Kimball Street stabbed the lad from Merrimack, New Hampshire, and the lad from Merrimack, New Hampshire died instantly. They were fighting over a nickel bag of marijuana. How that would have changed if it had been somewhat more legalized and more accepting today than it was back then, I don't know. Now it's legalized out west. It's pending in Maine, Massachusetts, and Vermont. The vast majority, again, I, people I spoke to, and people I respected, on both ends of the argument, the vast majority were for it, for legalization. I talked to a young lady who called me the other day. She spent 40 years dealing with childcare and nursing and so forth. She is against it because of what marijuana does to the youth. But somebody made a comment here that this bill is all about, you hope, the youth being 21 years or older. The youngsters aren't and shouldn't be affected like this, the same as alcohol. Uh, I would much rather deal with the marijuana individual than the drunk alcoholic. It's much easier to arrest, much, 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 much easier to do business with. Uh, I voted initially, uh, myself and another individual voted against this initially. So many people have talked to me, so many people I've respected. I'm going to change my vote, and I'm going to be voting yes for legalization. I think it's time we had it in New Hampshire. I think if nothing else, the money involved that the policemen are always looking for is very important. And uh, it can be determined and sent any way you want it. Um, I believe there's certain things, as one person told me, that the war on marijuana, the legalization of marijuana, is like a tsunami. It's just coming and coming and coming and coming and we all could be voting one way here and it would still overtake us. Uh, for that reason, um, I'm going to vote yes. For the President Sakurado, I think we're going to vote. I just finally point out that yeah, yeah. We're, we're, some of you have brought up the issue about looking and waiting for the study commissions to come out with their recommendations. I would put to you that we have two members here with law enforcement that spend their lives in law enforcement. They're not partisan, one's Republican and one's a Democrat. And they both have seen it for years, decades. Probably a lot more information the commission will ever receive. And you just heard to exact, I couldn't have explained it better and I couldn't give you more representative, uh, Gavin, that you've got to, an agreement on this after all those decades for the war on drugs to see this. 
there's your experience, and there's the best testimony you'll ever receive. Thank you. All right. Thank you. No, I, okay. Mm. All right, now I'm fine. If you, uh, we're going to vote on the amendment, amendment 2478. If you are in favor of amending House Bill 656 with amendment 2478, you'll indicate so by saying aye. If you are opposed to that nay, clerk will call the roll. Vice Chair, Representative Frank Separato. Yes. Representative Dennis Fields. No. Representative uh, Robert Fesch. No. Representative Larry Gagney. Yes. Representative John Burt. Yes. Representative Dennis Green. No. <laughs> Representative Carolyn Garkus. No. Representative Jody McNally. No. Representative Dave Testerman. No. Representative Scott Wallace. Yes. Representative Shannon Shanley. No. Representative Laura Panalakis. No. Representative Roger Berube. No. Representative Robert Rainey Cushing. Yes. Representative Beth Rod. Yes. Clerk. No, 35 years in criminal justice, by the way. Representative Kate Murray. No. Representative Richard O'Leary. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Representative Lynn Opterbeck. No. Chairman David Welsh. No. Number? Thirteen oh seven, yes. Number? Thirteen oh seven. Oh, seven to thirteen. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. I meant to say it in a way. It's still the same if they still thirteen or something. All right, so now we need another motion. We're dealing with the original bill now. Oh, We have a motion on the original bill, House Bill 656 FN-A-Local. That's amended. Sorry. That's all right. It's a long day. <laughs> so we have to vote on the original bill? Yes. Yeah. I need a, I need a motion. Rep. Ruby will make a motion. I'm going to have that panel on. Hey, you guys are adamant. Go ahead. Let's write the vote. <laughs> <laughs> I make a motion that we ITL bill HB 656. Second. Okay. Right. Second. Is that Dave Testament? Yeah. 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 Six seconds or something? Or seven seconds? Yeah. Who seconded it? Everyone. Everybody. Everyone. <laughs> Roger. Ruby. Roger. Yeah, Roger. Thank you. All right. We have a motion of inexpedient in the legislature. Representative Testament. Seconded by Representative Ruby. Bipartisan one, I might add. Uh, is there any discussion? I suspect not. We've already beat this thing to death. Uh, if you are in favor of the motion of an expedient to legislate for House Bill 656, you'll indicate so by saying aye, opposed nay, clerk will call the roll. Representative Frank Separato. No. Representative Dennis Fields. Yes. Representative Robert Fesch. Yes. Representative Larry Gagney. No. Representative John Burt. No. Representative Dennis Green. Definitely yes. Representative Carolyn Garkus. Yes. Representative Bonnie Ham. Oh, excuse me. Uh, Representative Jody McNally. Yes. Representative Dave Testerman. Yes. Representative Scott Wallace. No. Representative Shannon Shanley. Yes. Representative Laura Panalakis. Yes. Representative Roger Berube. Yes. Representative Robert Rainey Cushing. No. Representative Beth Rod. No. 
Clerk? Yes. Representative Kate Murray? Yes. Representative Richard O'Leary? No. Representative Lynn Opterbeck? Yes. Chairman David Welsh? Yes. 13 or 7. Seven. This time you can read it, John. 13 7. Thank you. 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 Thank you.